What's up, good people of the internet? My name is Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and today I'm going to be ranking and reviewing the guitar solos on Frank Zappa's recently released Whiskey A Go-Go 1968. Uh, this is number 70 in a series of me just ranking guitar solos on an album that I'm going to compare this album to the other 69 that I've done already from Frank Zappa. Uh, this, al this album's been out a couple, about a month now, just over a month. Um, so I've had... I've had some time to enjoy these solos. A um, couple things I'll say before I rank them. When I rank them, I'm, there's 11 of them that I'm counting as solos. I'm going to go from 11 to 1. I'll put the list on the screen when I'm done. Then I'll drop the list of where this falls among the others. A uh, couple comments just in general about this. I generally find that, for the most part, I absolutely love 60s Mothers shows. But most of the time, Zappa's guitar solos are not the main draw. Um usually some killer horn solos. I'm discovering that the bass player is bringing it really saucy on here. Um, the songs themselves, Frank's conducting of the band, sort of the general chaos and unpredictability of the 60s, I think is its main attraction. I don't think Frank Zappa's guitar playing, for the most part, like if we have a one of the songs on here, Khaki Sack, right? I like the solo in Khaki Sack, but it's preceded by like a, other solos, some like, like Bonk, Motorhead, Ian, you know, Preston on, on keyboards or Moog. Like, I think at this point in Frank's career, those musicians are bringing something that's a little more interesting and out there. And I think Frank's playing is, he's definitely trying to like push the envelope and maybe at times do something different, but I just don't think he's quite there yet. Um, and I, I really think for this release, there's one solo that is clearly above the rest. Um, and then everything else kind of, you know, they're, they're not too much different. Um, he has like a thin tone at times. Sometimes he's getting a little, little more distortion in there. Um, and one of the sort of tropes that he has a lot in, in, in this release especially is he'll find a lick that he really, really likes. Um, and a lot of his solos start off with this or he'll go on a bunch of like runs and kind of like maybe shred for a little while. And then as sort of a fallback, he'll find another lick and he'll repeat it like 10, 12 times, like a three note, four note lick, like and he'll really just like hammer that idea almost as if he's waiting for somebody from the band to fall in behind him and like take that energy of whatever he's trying to put out there. And once they do, then he launches off and, you know, does like some longer ideas or, you know, explores a little more, starts to just like quote unquote shred. Um, so there's not a lot of variation, but I do think some of them work better than the others. So that's a lot of rambling. Let's get on with it. There's 11. Let's start with number 11. Number 11 is Hungry Freak's Daddy. It's a Hungry Freak's Daddy solo. Super short, to the point. Frank's just tearing off, you know, not trying to do anything crazy or doesn't have enough time to do anything crazy. He's just kind of doing what you expect a Hungry Freak's Daddy solo to do. It's there. That's it. Yeah. Um, weird effect that he has on this one, though. It's almost like there's a, like a, what is it called when they clips the sound? Um, uh, uh. So you don't get that delay. It's like the opposite of a delay, but it's almost this real, almost like every other note is cutting out and you don't hear it. Almost, I guess it's some weird kind of filter, but it, it does seem like it's clipping the notes and you're like, it's it's a weird sound effect for this. I'm not really sure it works, uh, but in Hungry Freaks Daddy. Uh, number 10 is Tiny Sick Tears. Um, this is a Tiny Sick Tears jam. We don't actually get like that narration that we get on like the stage four Tiny Sick Tears. Um, right. Um, and this is very groovy. There's a lot of Frank just like hopping in on what's ever happening and just kind of riding along with the groove. Like he's not like, I would say in like, you know, in the future, once we get to, I don't know, as recently as 71, Frank is either completely ignoring what the rhythm section is doing, or he's like trying to challenge the rhythm section and like breaking whatever patterns they're laying down and like forcing them to like reconfigure themselves and follow him. He's very much in the pocket in so many of these solos. Um, and in this one, not only is he like dropping in right in the pocket, starts off kind of clean, drops some nice fuzz in after about 30 seconds, um, really tasty. It's about a minute and a half of soloing. Uh, but there's also like vocals going on, like people like improvising stuff. And he's kind of weaving around those and dancing around those. And it's very much a solo, but at the same time, it's not like the centerpiece of what's going on. It's very much part of this concerted effort to like create this tiny sick tears jam. Um, 
So that's number 10. Number nine is Whiskey Improvisation Episode 2. Um, this is a pretty low-key jam, and Frank just kind of emerges out of it. Like, oh, all of a sudden, Frank is like soloing out of this like jam that happens. Again, he starts off by just finding this lick and repeating it like over and over again until the rest of the band kind of kind of like falls in behind him. Um, it's kind of a timid solo, almost as if he wants to join in this improv festivities, but he, he doesn't want to be the center of attention. He really just wants to add color and flavor. So there is sort of a calling a Frank solo timid is probably something that is very, very rare in the history of Frank Zappa solos. I don't think I've ever said that in the other 69 I've done, going, oh, this is a timid Frank Zappa solo. But there, there's a little timidity to this. Like he doesn't want to demand attention. Um, and then um, around the four minute mark uh, of this jam, he starts this sort of like light jazzy chord dancing around, like just kind of like, dee, 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 you know, doing that sort of stuff where it's almost like a rhythm guitar solo. Um, and then around the seven minute mark of this, the rhythm guitar action gets a little more like heavy and forceful. Don't know if it's a solo. There are a number of moments on this, you know, Frank's the only guitar player. So there are a number of moments where like, okay, is he just playing rhythm or is he like, he has been known to say, hey, I'm gonna play a rhythm guitar solo, and he does so. Um, I don't know if he's like demanding attention in soloing, whether he's supporting somebody else, so he's always within the context of a jam. Um, and there are times when he's playing licks, and I don't know if this lick is meant to like create this other groove or whether he's actually soloing. So I kind of just picked the 11 songs where I think there's a dominant sort of Zappa presence, and you know, he's not just playing rhythm, but maybe throwing in some licks that could qualify as a solo. Uh, but yeah, number nine is Whiskey Improvisation, episode two. Uh, number eight is King Kong, part two. Um, it's divided into two parts because there's sort of this percussion breakdown and then they kind of go back into King Kong in the middle of it and that's the part two part. Um, Frank comes in, starts playing the same lick over and over and over again until the rest of the band just kind of falls in. Once they fall in, he is just shredding like crazy. In the background, I think it's Ray Collins. You can hear Ray Collins announce, hey, the GTOs are on stage, or come on up here, the GTOs. And while this chaos is happening, like people coming on stage or there's chaos in the venue, Frank is probably just shredding like one of his most just like, just tearing it up. Uh, there's not a lot of really just tearing it up and like just going as fast as you can on this release. Most of these are a lot more tasty and Frank seems a lot more particular about the notes he plays, but this one seems like a very, very like, just kind of going at it. Um, and I think that's because there's just so much craziness going on stage that it just kind of makes sense that he kind of has to do this. Um, uh, at one point, um, he just starts like, yeah, he starts repeating the same licks over and over again. He starts this really like low note kind of playing where he's almost like trying to play a riff or like, you know, trying to get some energy going. And this kind of reminds me of Can, uh, the German group, um, because a lot of those guitar things, you wouldn't describe them as solos because the entire band is like collectively improvising and nobody's really, it's not like you have one instrument and everybody's supporting them as a solo. That's what a lot of Frank's playing feels like towards the latter half of this King Kong. It's just, he's just part of this collective improvisation. He's not trying to step forward and solo. But because he's the lone guitar player, because we're used to from like, you know, 75 on, the only time Frank would pick up a guitar was when he was soloing. Um, it just feels, on well, 76, we have Ray White was showing there. Uh, but yeah, it just feels, uh, 76, uh, it just feels like uh, every time he's doing anything, it almost feels like a solo and it like draws attention to itself. Uh, but the King Kong part two, I get con vibes, uh, just like, He's kind of keep it low key. He's just kind of driving the energy. He's just trying to keep like the ball rolling and the energy up while chaos happens on stage. Uh, number six and number seven, back to back. I have the Duke take two at number six, the Duke take one. They did the Duke twice. Both of them contain essentially the same solo. I mean, he's not playing the same notes, but it's just like you get the head of the Duke and then we go into just percussion, really active, crazy drum action is going on and Frank is just soloing over this percussion. Um, it's pretty low key. He's definitely not getting too aggressive. He's just kind of toying around with ideas. Kind of reminds me of like 
where King Kong would kind of go in 71, Dupree's in 73 and 74, a little bit of Zoot Allure's in 75 or 76, early 76, maybe a little Yo Mama, in where this almost feels like the, the first part of what's gonna like drop into a more aggressive beat or to a heavier beat or something that like has like some sort of chord progression or something that's a little more like dynamic and building, but it never goes there. It's literally just several minutes of Frank, just kind of four minutes of Frank exploring around with ideas. Take one is awesome. Uh, and then take two is also awesome. But I feel like take two, um, maybe a little more aggressive from the start. They do them back to back. It feels like after they did take one, Frank was like, okay, I know how I want to start this. I know what I want to do with this. Um, they're both pretty good. They're both pretty fantastic. Um, but they're really just Frank exploring um, at a, a very early stage in his career. And I think this very much sets up sort of the template for those other exploratory solos later on. Uh, but those would be six and seven. Uh, number five is King Kong part one. Another one, about two and a half minutes into this, after a horn solo that precedes it that is ridiculous. Again, Frank starts repeating the same riff over and over again. He's got a nice clean sound on his guitar. Um, then we get in some of that chord skipping where he's kind of dancing around with some chords, getting nice. The band is responding to this chord attack and also getting kind of like jumpy. Um, around 5.45, um, about what, two, three minutes into him soloing and messing around with the chords, he starts playing like the same low notes over and over again or kind of toying around with the same general like progression that almost sounds like he's has a lick in mind or he's trying to come up with like a riff that can be like defining and it just seems like he's toying around with these ideas and he never really relaxes or you know says like oh this is what I want to do but there is this neat little like all right maybe he's like lo a lot of low end jamming like maybe he's live in the moment trying to find like a riff like an I a, something to center like a new song around or a new like idea around um so that's neat to see that exploratory action with Frank and this King Kong. And it's nice when, he, anytime he goes to like the low end and starts messing around, I think it's fantastic. Um, this is about a four minutes or so soloing in the King Kong one. Uh, number four is Khaki Sack. Uh, it's just a number of solos in a row. This is like your typical, almost jazz song. You got the head, you got a series of solos. Frank goes last. He is riding the groove in this. He is like, he is just going with everybody else. Solo before him starts. He joins it, he take, he kind of, you know, he's there for a little bit, then he takes off on his own, very much in the pocket, very tasty, very just like nice bomb in your head. You're just, you're with this. And the bass player, boom, do, do, he's just, he is dropping some lines. The mix is incredible, so you can hear him so well. And Frank is very much like taking his cue from what the rest of the band is doing in there. He's not, he's not that defiant, like, hey, I'm gonna like, break down your walls and you follow me to someplace else. This is a really solid, enjoyable, high energy in the pocket solo, khaki sack. Number three is Whiskey Choufflé, Choufflé, C-H-O-U-F-F-L-L-E. Um, this is after the previous song in which it's kind of just a 20 minute jam with a couple different solos. And after the previous solo ends, kind of a little bit of music happens. And then Frank just kind of starts a new idea, starts soloing with a really, really clean sound. Um, uh, where are we? A really, really clean sound. Then he hits some effects, things get a little bit nastier. He plays this little riff that almost sounds like a uh, LA woman. That part where it's like, no. Nah, no, nah, it's kind of building up towards the end. Um, I don't think L.A. Woman had been released at this point, right? L.A. Woman would not be released till later. But it reminds me of L.A. Woman. Um, and then it get kind of funky. Solo gets kind of funky at that point. <coughs> Frank's got some really funky energy. Horns are coming in in the background, dropping some like chords and stuff like that. Really playful. Frank's really having a good time. Just sounds really good. It's kind of loose. Um... You get like a couple minutes in the beginning of this solo, and I think at the end you get another like quick little really spry, just kind of quick jazzy on your feet type solo. Um, I think the latter part of this, and this is one of those I could have broken this up into maybe two solos, but I feel like the entire song ranks here at number three. Um, the latter part of this I think is more interesting just because of the overall groove and the way Frank is working that groove. Um, 
But early on, just Frank going from that clean sound to dropping those effects to get a little funky, that, that's all a pretty neat progression in a pretty short period of time uh, for something that's completely improv. That's like, okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep playing this new idea. Uh, a whiskey souffle. Uh, number two, another completely improvised piece of music, Brown Shoes Shuffle. After they finish Brown Shoes, Frank does do 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 and then they're off into solo land. In the very beginning, Frank's just kind of dropping some licks over and over again um, for about a minute, almost like building up ideas. Right around a minute, just over a minute, he starts to get a little more urgent. His tone starts to thicken up. We get a slightly more aggressive solo. That goes for about 40 seconds. Uh, then the sax comes in. Um, this goes on for a while. The song starts to fall apart in the end and Frank starts doing some really low runs, some really nice low runs. And then at the very ends of this, he just starts soloing. He just starts shredding. He just starts going off. It's his nastiest tone. It's his nastiest attitude. He just gets like this burst of really incredible energy. This is the last song of the, of the night. He is like, all right, I'm warmed up. I'm doing this. I'm leaving it all out there. Let's just go. I will say this about the entire thing. The songs I have, almost like as we progress through the show, like the ones on the bottom of this list tend to be earlier in the show. The ones at the end of this list seem to be later in the show. It does almost seem like Frank gained confidence as the as the show went on. I, I, I don't think that the confidence Frank had as a guitar player in two years, three years, he has here. And there is a moment earlier in this which... Still kind of bothers me, but I think it's in Whiskey Souffle where Frank's like inviting a bunch of people on the stage, like Elliot Ingbar, the Turtles, members of the Rolling Stones. Uh, one more person is out there that I can't remember. Um, uh, uh, Mail, I think John Mail is out there. I don't think any of them come on stage because later on, I think one of them spots Mark. I think uh, Ray's like, hey, there's Mark or something. Um, but I feel like, I don't know, it feels, it comes across in a weird, a needy way. Like, Frank was confident in what he was doing and the music he was making, but I almost feel like he didn't feel like he was accepted. or he, There was something weird. The way he invites these people on stage, and I don't think any of them showed up, um, it almost reflects that solo thing where early on in the show, he's really not that aggressive and really not taking chances. And as the show goes on, his solos really just become way more interesting. Uh, but my number one solo... And this actually made the 2024 Frank Zappa guitar solo March Madness. I think it went against, I think it went, I think it made the second round. I, I did not check. I think it went against Jim and Tammy's upper room at one point and beat Jim and Tammy's upper room, if I'm not mistaken, which is an advanced romance solo. I don't know. That, I may just be remembering that wrong. Uh, but anyways, number one is The Whip. The Whip is such a good solo that on Meat Light, the sort of, project object version of Uncle Meat. There was a sort of set list that had been found of like the original sequencing that Frank had put together. And there was a track called The Whip. And this song, this was half of this song. This song is 10 minutes. First half is a Don Preston, awesome solo. Second half is a Frank Zappa solo. By far the best solo on this album. Um, it would have been awesome to have this on the original Uncle Meat. That would have been a fantastic addition. Uh, but yeah, this is just... Uh, before the first half ends, Frank's there. I think he's like playing a little rhythm guitar to get from like the first half with Preston and the second half, kind of the vamp changes. Um, Frank start bending notes, like getting really aggressive with these bending notes. He's tossing off runs. Uh, you can just feel his confidence growing, it seems, from like the beginning of the solo as it goes on. Um, and he is just hitting these licks and bending notes, going off on runs. Um, we get a little more swag towards the end of this. Some of that Frank Zappa defiant guitar energy starts to seep in at the end of this. And you're like, yeah, man, this is the Frank I know. And it seems like really the only time in this show, what, it's about a five minute solo as we get about maybe three and a half, four minutes in that last minute, we're next level in it. Frank is going to that level that we all know Frank can hit as a guitar player. And it seems like he taps into this at the end of the whip. And the whip, I think, is easily, without argument, at least to these ears, the strongest solo on here. And really, other than the quick little burst at the end of Brown Shoes, I think is really the only one that can maybe compete with solos from later years when Frank's guitar playing really goes to the next level. Um, but the whip, 
Like if you were in this show and you had been watching the mothers and you see Frank playing guitar on stage, that whip, you're like, all right, this guy's gonna be huge, man, because this solo is ridiculous. But yeah, that's what the 11 looked like. 20 minutes, to talk about 11 solos. Yeah, I got a lot to say about Frank. I could talk for hours, sadly and unfortunately. But yeah, that's what I think. That's how I would rank them. Don't know what chouffle, spell wrong. Can't get rid of that little thing on my computer. So it's underlined red. But yeah, that's what I got. All right, let me know your thoughts on those solos, on this release, on anything I said in general that is wrong that you want to comment on. You know how comments work. I don't have to tell you. Subscribe, like, share, comment, do those things. And uh, if you haven't listened to this release, this is a fantastic release. Like it's a great, great release. And it's not because of these solos. The music is fantastic. The band is fantastic. The solos by other people are fantastic. And every once in a while, Frank just delivers the goods himself. But yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Oh, that's where I would rank it among the others. Yeah, this one's towards the back. I don't have it that far up. It's way back at number 58. Uh, I kind of go through the list, up the list, and say, can it be this? Can it be this? Can it be this? And at 57, I have Zappa 88, the last US show. And I really, really like that City of Tiny Lights solo. I think collectively that City of Tiny Lights solo with a couple other solos on Zappa 88 notch this a little bit above Whiskey A Go Go for me. And this is far as guitar solos only. If I had to rank Whiskey A Go Go, not with guitar solos. Uh, Zappa 88 is probably still way back at 57. Maybe not that far back. Probably more like the 30s or 20s. Um, Whiskey A Go Go jumps up to top 10, probably. Yeah, if we're not just focusing on the solos. But I already have a video about that. And I don't think I ranked it, but one day I, I, I will officially rank it. But anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. All right, talk to you later. Peace. Thanks.